Alice in Wonderland is thought to be one of the best examples of the literary nonsense genre and sparked many other similar stories. But beyond being a beloved children's book with many quirky characters who have integrated into our cultural identity, the true tale behind the writing of Alice in Wonderland is much darker than one might expect. What is up, Ewu crew? Today, we are taking a look at the people behind the famous story of Alice in Wonderland, and we'll discuss some of the more uncomfortable and creepy truths behind the author and his inspiration for the book. It may surprise you to find out that there was actually a real girl named Alice, whom the story was based on and written for. In fact, many of the more outrageous characters were based on real things, including the White Rabbit, the Mad Hatter, the Cheshire Cat, the Queen of Hearts, and the Dodo. Yet, despite being a book written for children, the truth behind the real Alice is anything but kid-friendly. If you enjoy true crime, mysteries, and true stories, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Now, follow us down the rabbit hole and let's get into it. The Adventures of Alice in Wonderland was written under the name Lewis Carroll, but no such person ever existed. Lewis Carroll wasn't a real person, but the pen name for Charles Ludwig Dodgson. Born in 1832 England, Dodgson was one of 11 children. Growing up, he was known to entertain all his siblings with his made-up stories and games. As a young boy, he suffered from dyslexia and a terrible speech impediment that caused him to stutter. The dyslexia made it very difficult for him to read, a surprising disability for someone who later in life would go on to become one of the most famous authors of children's fiction. Despite these struggles, Dodgson pushed himself very hard to work through his disabilities, and he was still able to do very well academically. In fact, the dyslexia likely helped Dodgson excel at math, and he eventually became a mathematician. When he was older, he worked as a tutor before later becoming a teacher at the University of Oxford. He was reportedly a strange young man who grew into a rather awkward and shy adult, but was described by those who knew him as a devout mathematics scholar and pure of heart. Dodgson allegedly stated that he got along best with children, as they were kinder and easier to be around than adults. In fact, throughout his life, he had frequent relationships with children, but recently, these seemingly harmless relationships have been thrown into doubt. Having written creatively often in his youth, Dodgson already boasted great literary accomplishments, such as having his work featured in magazines and national publications. Still, the ever-humorous author was quoted as musing, I don't think I have yet written anything worthy of real publication, but I do not despair of doing so someday. It seems the multifaceted young man was humble in his writing skill, but had his sights firmly set on furthering his expertise in the discipline. While at Oxford, Dodgson met the Dean of Christ Church, Henry Little, whom he occasionally worked alongside. Dodgson first befriended the Dean's son, Harry, who was nine at the time when he himself was around 30. During the Victorian era, there was a trend at the time of unmarried young men being seen as uncles of sorts to families. In the uncle role, these young men would be welcomed to dinner and go on trips with the family, like an extended family member, though they were often not related. Dodgson fell into the uncle role with Harry, and he taught him math, and they would often go rowing together. As Dodgson was an avid photographer, the Little family hired him to take pictures of the entire family. It was there that the family's relationship with Dodgson really blossomed. With the parents' blessing, Dodgson would frequently take the little children on outings, such as picnics or boating down near the River Thames. It was on one of those outings, on July 4th in 1862, that Dodgson and another male colleague took the three little daughters on a rowing trip. This was not unusual, as he had taken them out on trips a few times before. Yet, it was as they rowed down the river that Dodgson noticed the girls seemed particularly bored. He attempted to entertain them with a story, 
much like the ones he had told his own siblings when he was younger. The story was made up on the spot, inspired by the girls before him and the things around them that they passed on the boat trip. He was most inspired by Dean Little's 10-year-old daughter, a dark-haired girl named Alice, who looked very little, like the Alice we imagine in the story today. Born on May 4, 1852, in Westminster, England, Little was the fourth of Henry and Lorena Little's 10 children. In fact, Dodgson had been taken with Alice since they met, and he actually noted in his diary the specific day he met her, on April 25, 1856, six years before the fateful boat ride. During that boat ride, Dodgson told the girls the tale that would eventually become the Alice in Wonderland we know today, though it was much shorter. He wrote in his diary, in a desperate attempt to strike out some new line of fairy lore, I had sent my heroine straight down the rabbit hole to begin with, without the least idea what was to happen afterwards. Hearing the fantastical story, young Alice begged Dodgson to write it down for her, and the next day, he immediately began to write his first draft of the story. After a month of hard work, Dodgson once again took the girls up the river for a boating trip, where he told them his latest version of the story, expanded with new characters and adventures. After receiving their approval, he set about finding other children to read the story as he made changes. It took him about a year as he continued adding to the tale of Alice until finally it had doubled in length since his original draft. Dodgson practiced illustrations for the storybook by sketching real rabbits. He also tried to copy Alice's face from his photographs of her in meticulous detail, but apparently his images were never used because all of his characters always looked too sad. In order to publish the children's book without any ties to his academic career at Oxford, Dodgson invented the pseudonym Lewis Carroll. This moniker was roughly based on his real name, Charles Ludwig. Lewis was the anglicized form of the Latin word for Ludwig, while Carroll was taken from the Latin word Carolus, which was adapted from Charles. In 1864, Dodgson gave Alice Little a handwritten version as a Christmas present. It was titled, Alice's Adventures Underground, and he inscribed the first page to say, in memory of a summer's day. He apparently referred to young Alice as the person without whose infant patronage I might possibly never have written at all. The first version was still shorter than the later one that was published and didn't have any of the characters of the Mad Hatter or the Cheshire Cat, who would be added later. At first, the Littles seemed excited about having a story written that was inspired by their daughter, Alice. And the Dean actually suggested the title to change to Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, which it would be famously known by. Prior to this, the title had altered from Alice's Hour in Elfland, Alice Among the Fairies, and Alice Among the Goblins. Before it was published, Dodgson and the Littles had some sort of falling out. Right around the time he gave Alice the hand-drawn book, all of the little children were no longer allowed to see him. Beyond being colleagues, the Dean and Dodgson had been close friends, and the Littles trusted Dodgson enough to take their daughters out without them present. But seemingly out of nowhere, they cut off all communication with him. What may have happened between them is something that has been speculated about for years and many have assumed that Dodgson did something inappropriate to Alice, which resulted in the family cutting off all communication. But there is no evidence of this. Looking back, Dodgson seemed to have a fascination and almost obsession with young Alice. But there is little evidence to say what actually happened between them. Dodgson was known to keep a diary, but the pages where he recorded the day that resulted in the rift have been mysteriously torn from the book and never been found. Because of this, there have been countless assumptions and theories about what those pages may have contained. The only real piece of evidence we have that something untoward may have occurred between Dodgson and Alice is the sudden rift. The Littles, both the parents and children, all stopped seeing him for several months after which the Dean and his wife, Lorena, slowly started to socialize with him again, 
but he was never again allowed to see the children and definitely not allowed to take them out for picnics or boating. It is certainly curious to wonder what Dodgson could have done that would lead the Dean and Lorena to forcefully extricate the man from their children's lives, but maintain a cordial relationship with the bachelor themselves. In his diaries, Dodgson is said to have written frequently about his battle against sin, where he begs God for the strength to resist his sinful desires. Many have assumed that Dodgson was writing about his feelings for Alice, but Alice is actually not mentioned as often in his diary entries, as one may assume. In fact, he never actually names exactly what he means by sin. Some of the rumors circulating about what may have caused the cleft between the family and Dodgson include that he may have proposed marriage to the young Alice. For the little family, it would have been alarming to have the 30-year-old Dodgson try to marry 11-year-old Alice. It would certainly explain why the littles pulled away from him, and Alice was never allowed to be alone with him again. There is another theory that casts a better light on Dodgson, and is one that is supported by some historical evidence. In this theory, it is not Alice who Dodgson has fixated on, but rather her mother, Lorena. Lorena was wildly known to be a great beauty and rumors at the time said that she was secretly in love with one of her husband's colleagues. Could this have been Dodgson? It would certainly explain why the Dean would not want Dodgson anywhere near his family. As well, his diary entries about sin could be interpreted to be his thoughts on adultery and his feelings for Lorena, not Alice. But again, this is only speculation. There is evidence of his relationships with grown women, and so it seems that he did not have a fixation with only young girls, as many believe. As a photographer, Dodgson took many photos of children, and the photos that he took of young Alice are some of the only surviving evidence that hint at Dodgson's creepy obsession with her. The photos show Alice in a state of undress, the strap of her dress off of her shoulder, it's important to remember that in these pictures, she's only six years old, but the historical context is also critical. Alice had been intentionally posed as a beggar child in a tattered and dirty dress, a kind of character for her to play, likely requested by her family. Although Dodgson reportedly had a parent present at all his photo sessions, a questionable note that Dodgson wrote to the mother of a different little girl, of only eight years old at the time, with whom he wanted to set up a photo shoot, revealed what could possibly be seen as a disturbing fascination. He writes, It is a chance not to be lost, to get a few good attitudes of Annie's lovely form and face, as by next year she may, though I much hope won't, fancy herself too old to be a daughter of Eve. Perhaps this type of language was normal at the time, for Dodgson seemed entirely unabashed to communicate these thoughts with the girl's own mother. But in today's perspective, these words are definitely concerning. The troubling photographs were taken long before Alice in Wonderland was ever cooked up, and so her parents had seen them and still allowed their daughter to be around Dodgson for years. In fact, the Littles had kept a hand-colored copy of the photo in a case in their house. Therefore, we can probably rule this strange photo shoot out as being responsible for the falling out. As strange and creepy as it may sound to us, it's important to remember that when Dodgson was writing in the mid-18th century, the concept of childhood innocence existed. The Littles likely saw nothing wrong with Dodgson's interest in their daughter nor the partially dressed photos because they believed that no one would have inappropriate feelings or inclinations towards a child. It just wasn't something that they could understand. It was not a common concept that the average person would even know occurred. Clearly though, as soon as they thought their daughter was in some sort of danger, the Littles quickly removed her from the situation, if that is in fact what happened, of course. A year after the mysterious falling out, Alice in Wonderland was finally published. It was met with rave reviews and an adoring public. 
one of the many reasons it has never been out of print since its 1865 release date. Besides being inspired by the real Alice, Dodgson also looked to other things around him to create his magical world and absurd characters, including other people, common expressions, and songs. The White Rabbit character was said to be inspired by Dean Little, Alice's father, who was a very busy man at Oxford and was reportedly always in a hurry and checking his pocket watch before he would run off, often arriving late. Besides, he apparently had a small door in his office that was nicknamed the Rabbit Hole. The elusive, grinning, and disappearing Cheshire Cat was apparently based on a few different things. The phrase to grin like a Cheshire cat was common at the time, which meant to grin broadly and may have originated from in signs of grinning lions painted in Cheshire. Furthermore, Dodgson himself grew up in a Cheshire village, where he would have encountered the famous Cheshire variety of cheese, often shaped into grinning cats. Other characters include the Queen of Hearts, notorious for her cruelty, short temper, and famous line from the book, off with their heads. Though never officially claimed as inspiring the Queen of Hearts, it is commonly believed that the moody and legendarily grumpy looking Queen Victoria gave him the idea for the cruel and selfish character. The Dodo, which only features in the books and earliest movies, was said to be a character Dodgson created after himself because of his stutter that made him pronounce his own name as Dodo Dodgson. Perhaps the most interesting of characters Dodgson created was the Mad Hatter, who was added to the story before publishing. He is also one of the darker character inspirations. Alice meets the outlandish Mad Hatter at a tea party in the story, as mad as a hatter was another common phrase in the Victorian era. Alluded to a rather tragic true occurrence in history, hatters, the title for people who made hats, would often use toxic substances such as mercury to turn animal fur, usually from rabbit or beavers, into felt for hats. Hatters would often suffer from mercury poisoning from too much exposure to the toxic substance, and it would literally drive them mad. Sufferers would develop mental and physical disorders, such as irritability, distorted vision, mumbled or confused speech, muscle twitches, and tremors that would result in violent, uncontrollable movements called hatter shakes and other neurological symptoms. Dodgson used mercury poisoning to explain why the hatter had gone mad, likely made ill by the enormous hat he was often drawn wearing. Many people had theorized that Dodgson had been on something when he wrote Alice in Wonderland. The bizarre characters and world seemed too strange to come from just his imagination, and many think the inspirations had to come from some sort of psychedelic trip. Some believe Dodgson was taking some sort of drugs while writing to influence his eccentric and peculiar story. If he was, it was likely opium, which was very popular and legal at the time. These theories are furthered by the presence of the character of the Caterpillar, who is seen in the book smoking a large water pipe and blowing smoke into Alice's face when she nears. Water pipes were frequently used to smoke opium, and the smoke in the story often distorts the reality around Alice. The mushrooms in the story are also magical, and when Alice eats a piece of them, she transforms in size. As well, the bottles marked Drink Me and cakes labeled Eat Me that have drug connotations and either shrink Alice down or make her grow to the size of a giant. The Jefferson Airplane song from 1967, White Rabbit, was inspired by these drug-fueled theories. Although it is impossible to know for sure if Dodgson did take any reality-altering drugs, there is really no conclusive evidence. It is entirely possible that the zany author just housed an innate creativity, a skill that wouldn't be all too surprising considering his talent in other avenues like mathematics and photography, and most historians have dismissed these ideas, despite the popularity of the theories. Instead, they have explained that he suffered for most of his life with a terribly painful migraine disorder. Migraines, as many of us know, can cause severe headaches, 
and some of the sufferers can see auras around people and objects. In Dodgson's case, his migraines were allegedly so bad that he would see strange hallucinations, not unlike auras, but a little different. Dodgson's particular migraines were actually caused by a rare neurological disorder that would distort his reality. Specifically, it would change the way he perceived the size of things around him, such as his own hands and feet. Sometimes they would appear very large or unnaturally small. Following this train of thought, Alice frequently changes sizes in the story, and this could have been a way for Dodgson to express how his own mind played tricks on him. This strange migraine disorder was officially discovered and categorized in 1955 by a psychiatrist named John Todd, and it has since been known as Todd Syndrome. However, it is more commonly called Alice in Wonderland Syndrome. After publishing Alice in Wonderland with great success, Dodgson went on to write his sequel. Eerily, several years later, he met another little girl who inspired the second book. And even creepier, she was also named Alice. Was he trying to replace Alice Little? Alice Reiki spoke to Dodgson and talked about her reflection in a mirror. When he asked her to explain how a mirror reversed everything, she guessed that there was perhaps another side of the glass and another world and version of everyone there. It was this idea that inspired him to write Through the Looking Glass and What Alice Found There, a sequel set six months after the first book. It was sold out for seven weeks after its publication and was a much darker version of the Wonderland seen in the first book. After writing both books, Dodgson started to separate his personal and professional life from the life of Lewis Carroll. Apparently, whenever letters came in the mail from fans to Oxford, he never replied or even read them and asked them all to be returned to the sender. It seems that despite his outlandish writing style through which he created magnificent and energetic worlds, Dodgson himself had been quite the quiet and introverted soul. Charles Dodgson wrote about Alice only one more time in 1871 as a long nonsense poem, The Hunting of the Snark. Because of the wondrous story he had written, Dodgson continued to have friendships with young children and their parents, including two of Queen Victoria's own grandchildren. But his life of many ups and downs soon came to a sad end. He became ill in 1898 with pneumonia and died later that year. But what happened to the real Alice? She was actually as big as a celebrity back then, just as famous and well-known as the ones we have today. Everyone knew that she had been the inspiration for the story, and it was no secret that Dodgson, or Carol, had written them for and about her. Her photographs were everywhere along with the book, so people knew what she looked like and where she lived. She struggled to go anywhere in public without people asking her questions about Alice in Wonderland. Just like Dodgson, Alice grew tired of the attention and the association with Alice in Wonderland. For most of her life, Alice refused to even talk about Alice in Wonderland. And in 1928, she actually sold the illustrated Alice's Adventures Underground book that Dodgson had given her as a gift to an American dealer for 15,400 pounds, which is roughly more than $20,000 USD today. The book was later returned to England and is now in the British Museum. It wasn't until she was 80 that Alice started to accept the association with the book, and in 1932, she traveled to New York City with her son and sister in order to attend a Lewis Carroll exhibition and receive an honorary doctorate from Columbia University for awakening with her girlhood's charm, the ingenious fancy of a mathematician familiar with imaginary quantities, stirring him to reveal his complete understanding of the heart of a child. Two years later, Alice died at the age of 82, but her legacy continues to live on. The idea that Dodgson had inappropriate feelings towards Alice has endured to today. Even though there is no evidence of this, many historians have tried to combat it with their own theories, most of which were discussed today. 
Even stranger, it is reported that Dodgson, in his later years, actually denied repeatedly that any specific little girl was the muse for his famous Alice character. Audiences contested this assertion due to the fact that Alice Little's full name was included in a poem tagged onto the end of Through the Looking Glass. Furthermore, many assert that hidden references are mixed into the Alice books that directly relate the very Alice Little Dodgson knew so well. But Dodgson retorted that it was his common practice to dedicate his acrostic poems to a variety of girls he knew in real life that Alice Little was no special exception. Those around Dodgson seemed to have differing opinions about the purity of his character. A man named Vladimir Nabokov, who translated Alice into Russian, allegedly complained that Dodgson had a pathetic affinity to the creepy narrative of Nabokov's own novel, Lolita, which follows an adult man who grows very infatuated with a young girl he knows. Some scholars have proposed rather abstract connections between Dodgson's literary works and his possible hidden inclinations as well, such as when writer A.M.E. Goldschmidt presented an essay psychoanalyzing Alice in Wonderland at Oxford. Here, he made the rather bold claim that Alice's fall down the well was, quote, the best known symbol of coitus. Goldschmidt's lack of psychological training has been criticized when he drew this conclusion, and many think that he was merely attempting to parody the unfounded assertions and outdated techniques of old psychologists such as Freud. Still, even with all this swirling suspicion, many who knew Dodgson in real life described him as a kind and moral man. Regardless, because of the lack of evidence, Dodgson would be remembered with both our modern standards and historical context. He was both a gifted writer and mathematician and a shy, awkward man who preferred the company of children to adults. Whether there is more to him, good or bad, we may never know. The same goes for Alice Little, who should be remembered as a clever and imaginative little girl who sparked the creation of an enduring story. We cannot know for sure what caused such a deep rift between Dodgson and the Littles, one that irrevocably fractured their friendship. But what we can say with certainty is that the world of Alice in Wonderland has a history that is darker and more interesting than fiction.